there's so many VCs uh, around, right? So what is the differentiator and what are the other VCs doing? What's their strategy? Mm, sure. Nigel, why don't I, um, I think we've got a two by two that might help elucidate kind of how everyone else may sit on this map. Now, naturally, every single VC should, we hope, have its own right to win, right to play. Um, but by putting it on this map, hopefully we can sort of create a bit of a, a, a framework for evaluating the styles of venture capital funds. I mean, everyone's got a unique style personality, but these are the broad categories. So the dimensions that we use here, and you'll see some of the same terminology we've used earlier today. Uh, on the vertical axis, you'll see a, a dimension of, for example, whether you're a high conviction, relatively smaller by number portfolio investor, or whether you're a spray and pray, willing to take a huge number of bets uh, and then follow those that come through. On the horizontal axis, you'll see on the left-hand side, a bottoms up or very deal-led approach to the right-hand side, which is a top-down approach. We use this framework a lot in thinking about, you know, who do we want to work with as well? And, and to, be, to start with, what, I, what do we really like about Southeast Asia? It is a collaborative ecosystem. Every single one of these four quadrants deserves and needs a, has a right to win and a right to be around. So let me start with the bottom left, and I'll just go around in, in sort of a clockwise direction. So the bottom left is where you've got a spray and pray deal led shop. That's your typical investor who does you know, 50, 100,000, maybe even half a million types of checks, but into as many portfolio, as many companies as they can. A typical portfolio, for example, 50 or 100 million would be looking at 100 or 100 plus different investee companies. Naturally, within that, the goal as an investor in that quadrant is to see as much as possible. And as Vic and I, you know, we've, we've, we've talked with you about earlier, Nigel, that's, that was appropriate and suitable, particularly early on in Southeast Asia's ecosystems development when it was relatively nascent and you could spray and pray into the majority of the better quality companies here. Uh, as we've talked about, and with the returning of capital and talent back into the ecosystem, we think this particular quadrant, you'll start to see a bit of a bifurcation and you'll have spray and pray more so in the bottom right-hand corner where you see a bit more of a top-down approach. I'm gonna select them, for example, this country or this industry and spray and pray across that because you think that that particular country or industry respectively will have an alpha of its own. And so that's the objective. On the top left uh, and the third quadrant before I go to the top right, You've got high conviction investors they spend a lot of time diligencing each and every portfolio company, but underlying it is still a deal led approach. Now, again, not wrong. Uh, in this category, you've got your family offices, your CVCs. Uh, in general, they leverage a lot on, re on, on relationships, on partnerships, and even corporate relationships to get sourcing of companies. But because they're not typically kitted out to do a high velocity of deal flow making or deal making rather, uh, you end up doing a high conviction kind of approach. So you're betting down into just a few. So typically portfolios here, again, 50 to $100 million portfolio size, you'll have about, you know, call it 15 to 30 investments. The top right is where we sat and, and you know, at the risk of rehashing what we've mentioned a couple of times now, there is a flywheel there, which we think is relatively untapped in Southeast Asia, but also partially because of the maturity of the ecosystem has only started to emerge where you can do this now, where there's enough, enough depth in the market so that when you have your thesis-led approach, whether it be country, by sector, by industry, by business model specifically, you can select areas where you want to turn, turn over that stone to use the analogy that Vic said earlier and go down deep enough to pick the winners. And over time, that allows you to have the comprehensive deal sourcing to leverage research in adding value to your portfolio companies and also having a high conviction ability to select better over multiple different rounds. For example, our fund two, which is a $100 million fund, we're only looking to do about 15 investments. So you can see we're very much in the top there, high conviction. We've still got diversification, of course, uh, but we're, and, and then in terms of you know, how we select those portfolio companies are very much a top-down approach. It allows us, both Vic and I, to be really hands-on with each portfolio company, but hopefully that gives you a sense for kind of where everyone else sits on that map.